I'm Ross, a curious parent. And I'm John, an education expert. This is From the Sidelines. Bite-sized study tips to help you help them through. Hello, John. Hi, Ross. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are yourself? Yeah, very good. Very good. Are you enjoying imparting your wisdom uh, on myself and those that are obviously listening and, and watching? Well, I was just about to say, it's quite nice. Whenever I impart some knowledge on you, I get a, a warm smile back, yeah. thinking that it's also going to be taken home tonight with you and, and used uh, in, in your house as well. So, yeah, it's great. It, in all seriousness, it's great to be, to be giving parents, uh, I think, what I needed when I was you know, a, a, a parent to begin with um, and things that I've learned along the way in terms of as a school teacher and a leader. So if we can give as many practical advice and, and, and tips as possible, then uh, it's great, you know, great for everyone. And, and you say that about taking it back genuinely. I'm not just saying it because you, you sat opposite me, but you know, that, that has been the case. And, and some of these kind of individual pieces that you can start to see how they all add up to the one bigger piece has been helpful for us. We've got two really young children, but I can still see how we're implementing it and mm-hmm. how, Probably a lot of this will start to come in as as my my uh, my oldest reaches the the kind of school school ages as such. Um, so it's good it's good to have a first hand opportunity to to put some of that in practice. It really is. Yeah, and it, and it's nice to for us to 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 just to be chatting very kind of casually so that people can feel it. it's a comfortable and easy listen. Hopefully yeah. that they can implement it very quickly and very easily. Um, doesn't take a lot of technical knowledge um, or finance or anything like that. Actually, all these things. We know that they work, and just give them a go, and hopefully it makes a big difference. Yeah, and we we are seeing we're seeing it come back as well from the other side. We're seeing people share what they've been up to, sharing the kind of the, the tactics, the materials, the resources that we're, we're asking to either create themselves, um, and and that's really important for us, isn't it, to see kind of a, a difference, I suppose, from your point of view, also from mine in terms of asking you the questions and understanding further to see how this is making a difference to to parents, carers, champions of young people, as, as we refer to them as. Yeah, 100%. So a big thanks to everyone that, that, that is sharing what they're doing. Please keep them coming. We'd love to see what, what's happening, how you're implementing the ideas, um, and how it's making a difference. So... So, topic for today, mm. I'm not going to lie, was pretty exciting when I, when I had a quick read of it. Uh, something that I think everybody feels that they need. Um, I'm guessing two words that definitely link quite well together uh, in terms of motivation and rewards. Uh, so, you know, always been a fan of, of rewards. Mm-hmm. Uh, always understood motivation is important to get there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what, what, what I suppose to start with we need to understand is... How has education today changed for our young people? Because, you know, that's one thing that those listening might not fully understand. And I think it's really important to get that understanding to start with. Okay, so from back in our, their day Mm -hmm. to where we are now, what's that change look like? What's the main things? Okay, it's, I suppose one of the biggest things is that lots of the uh, assessments now at the end of of a, a key stage. So for instance, secondary school, those, what we would typically call GCSEs. Okay, um, they are now very much more exam based, and lots of coursework has been almost cut, cut out of virtually all subjects. So what it means is that that has increased the the pressure and the high stakes testing because you're going into an exam knowing that it's all or nothing, a little bit like a driving test. You know, you take your driving, uh, you know, lessons over 10, 12, 13, 14 weeks. There's no kind of there's nothing in the bank. There's no like, oh yeah, but my coursework was graded at a seventy percent, so I only, I only need to do get fifty percent in my driving test. No, no, it's it's all or nothing. You yeah. know, it's kind of all on it, and that's what our. If you think as a parent, what was it like when you did your driving test, and think about the stress of kind of it's all or nothing. That's what our children are facing as well. That actually though their exams. So the exams are longer. Mm. Some of them, you know, two two and a half hours long. Mm. And again, if you think about our lives, if you went for a job interview. And in your interview, they asked you to sit in a sports hall in very warm conditions with 200 other people sitting the same assessment to Already try and strange. get to try yeah, and get yeah. that job. Yeah. It, it, it wouldn't be very nice. But we, we we're putting our, our our children in these situations, so we need to we need to be appreciate it. We also know that in this day and age of social media, there is that kind of everyone shares their highlights, don't they, on social media? No one, nobody shows their, or not many people share their lowlights. So people are wanting to, to to feel like they have to sh- you know show up to you know I got this grade or I've done this or I'm doing really well or so there's that external pressure 
as well as the pressure of the you know of the intensities of the exams. So it's a very very difficult time for our, for our young people, and and there have been you know a lot more a lot more difficult content that's been brought down from A level into GCSE and GCSE mm. into you know Keysage three and Keysage two, et cetera, et cetera. So it is now more intense uh, and, and more difficult and more demanding. And, and I think one of the key things that you mentioned there, which uh, is worth highlighting for for those listening and watching, is uh, the the element of coursework. Mm-hmm that previously was quite significant in a mm-hmm. lot of subjects, the ones that I certainly remember from when, when I was at school, um, isn't necessarily there anymore. And therefore, the role that we play as parents and carers and champions is actually vital to ensure that children are prepared for those exams when ultimately, like you say, it's pretty much all or nothing, isn't it? Yeah, correct. And we can do a lot as parents to, to, to help that. And we, again, all of our episodes are geared towards yeah. how can you help at home? but it's understanding a little bit of well, what does that final performance, I suppose, if you were thinking about it in, in terms of uh, uh, an, an artistic or a kind of a, or, or a music sense or a sporting sense, what's the final performance look like? Yeah. How stressful is it? And therefore, how do we need to work back from that to, you know, to prepare our you know, children for that? And in this case, like I say, it's a couple of hours each. So, I mean, some of these, some of these um, subjects have three papers, so it's not just an hour and a half or two hours. It's times by three papers. You might have two papers in a day. So you might have maths in the morning, English in the afternoon. It could be very, very warm outside. It could be, you know, a stuffy sport. All you, you know, it, it's not the ideal conditions, is it? You know, so, but ultimately that's that's how schools operate. And obviously with a system of getting everyone through at the same time, then, you know, that, that, that's how we do it. So that links in, in terms of going back to, you know, you're talking about the, the topic today. That's why it's really important for us to motivate our, 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 our young people because, it's a tough gig at the moment. So that's what we're saying then. The, the motivation of young people is pretty critical in terms of in terms of performance. Is that the message that you want to get across at this, this point? Yeah, 100%. Because if you, if you are, let's say you're studying 10 subjects, 8, 9, 10 subjects, and each of those subjects has two exams, some of them might have three, you could be looking at 20, 25, up to 30 you know, exams over a period of maybe you know, five, six weeks. Like that's not that's not something that most people will go into and think, oh, I can't wait for this. I'm so excited about, you know, it, it's going to be hard. Uh, and we know that our children haven't developed as much resilience and, and emotional um, kind of, you know, well-being and security uh, that, that, that we have as, as adults maybe. So we need to be able to be around them and support them and motivate them as much as we can to be successful because there will be times midway through that four or five weeks where it gets tough Absolutely. or they've gone in and they've been really confident and the paper's been awful yeah. and they've come out thinking oh, like that was that was my that was the subject I thought I'd do best on and that and and especially if it's one of the first exams and they have a you know they, they, they feel like they've had a, a really tough time that can knock their confidence so thinking about how we motivate them throughout that time is really important and you know, our name for this podcast, From the Sidelines, that's exactly what we're doing. We're motivating them from the sidelines. We're doing everything we can. Again, think about it in a sporting sense. We're the, we're the cheerleaders on the sideline, you know, giving them that motivation to say, come on, keep going, you can do this. And it's really, really important to do that, knowing that what they are going through is the toughest time that they've faced so far in their educational journey, whether that is, you know, SATs at end of key stage two, whether it's GCSEs, mm. whether it's A-levels, whether it's degree, mm. like this is tough stuff. And also they can't have you sat, sit next to them in the exam hall. They're on their own. So that we need to motivate them as much as we can. So look at the, the other side of it then and thinking about the rewards piece. Okay. So obviously, yeah, motivation, critical rewards. We've kind of touched on briefly. What do, what do rewards look like? Are we talking physical rewards? It, you know, is there a particular optimum reward or, or way of doing it, do, do you reckon? Well, the rewards work perfectly with motivation because by offering a reward, you are hopefully providing some motivation. The idea, yeah. If the reward is something that is desirable or worth having mm-hmm. in, in plain English, I suppose, to, 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 to your child, okay? And you therefore might, if we go back a step, you might want to think about talking to your child about what those rewards might be. Because you might think that the reward, a reward of going to... Um, you know, the local coffee shop, because you like to have a coffee there, is really, really good. And they're like, oh God, God. So it then doesn't become as desirable to, you know, to, to them. So it's about having that discussion about what will make them tick, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, granted, before I, I would put a disclaimer now, they'll probably they'll probably go in for the, the monetary rewards straight. Oh, well, actually, <laughs> 20 quid here. I want this, I want that, I want that. Well, yeah, 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 we all want that. Um, it's about finding things that actually are nice rewards that maybe don't cost money as well. So they don't have to be physical. You might want to 
you know, space it out, you know, and put some physical rewards in at some point, especially after a very difficult week of exams or something that they can you know, look forward to. If you want to potentially, you know, spoil them or, you know, put something, that's, that's absolutely fine. But lots of them don't have to be. It can just be the fact that they have, you know, right, for the next hour, we're going to, you know, we're going to have time away. We're going to shut the books and we're going to watch a film together. Or, or, or you're going to watch your favorite TV program on your own. Or we're going to go for a walk. Or, you know, we're going to do this. Or I'll make you your favorite tea. Or I'll bring a cup of coffee up, you know, or a hot cup of hot chocolate. Up, or it's all those things that we can do that don't have to cost a lot of money, don't have to cost hardly any money, but are there to be seen as, you know, if you're doing two Pomodoros, which are 25 minutes um, focused sets of studies we've talked about before. If you're doing two of those in an hour, which which match perfectly in an hour, so you've got 25 minutes study, five minute break, get up, walk around, go to the toilet, get a drink, another 25 minutes. At the end of that, that might be where you say, okay, well, there's going to be a half an hour reward now. You know, you f we know your favorite TV program starts at eight o'clock. So we're going to do a two Pomodoros from seven till eight. And then you can watch program eight till eight till half past eight. That is a great, nice reward to know that uh, you know, they've done some hard work and a nice rewards on the horizon so they can physically see it on the study planner. So we talked about a study planner last time. Yeah. Put those rewards on there. Or it might be that on Saturday, because you've done two or three exams and you've worked really hard, we're going to go out and do, you know, whatever together. Or, we, or I'm going to take you out for this. Or, you know, it's something nice that, that gets people through because we know that can be tough. So is there a bit of a danger for at this point in time, thinking all of the different techniques we've mentioned, we mentioned about study planner, how many times, you know, within a week that the, the, the child might be needing to study. Mm -hmm. Is there a bit of a risk that they're only doing that because of a reward? And therefore, you know, I'm thinking from a parent point of view, if, if you're constantly thinking about having to give out rewards or motivate your, your child on the basis of achieving a reward, does that potentially start to cause friction and stress? And how how do we manage this? How do we how, what what do you think about that that whole kind of management of motivating to get a reward and and that perspective there? Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ross. That, that there is a danger that actually that you get to a point where I want you to do this, and you say that as a parent, yeah. and your child says, "What's in it for me?" Exactly. That's, yeah. And that's that's a dangerous place to get to because actually they only do things because they feel that they're going to get something in return. And we know that's not how life works. So we need to kind of, we need to use, we need to use it in, in, in the right way. Now, I think initially loading up those, what we call extrinsic or external rewards is quite useful to get them started. Mm -hmm. So this equals this, two Pomodoros and you get the, you know, that type of stuff. But we need to then start to wean that off them because we want to get to a stage where we are intrinsically or internally, or our students are intrinsically or internally motivated so that they know that they're doing things because it means something for themselves. Because that's what they need to be as an adult. They need to know that my hard work, I'm doing hard work because it means it means something to me. And I know it's important to me, not because there's a carrot you know, that I'm going to be getting in, in terms of that reward. So thinking about how we do that is really important. Um, so it's making sure that you are, you're just aware of it. And, and there's no there's no right or wrong way to do that. It's just balancing and having that overview to make sure that we're not getting into a situation where I'm only going to do something if I'm, if I, if I'm given something. Uh, we need to we need to win them off that and tell them about that internal motivation that actually they need to be, you know, they they are achieving for themselves. You know, they, these exam results that they're going to get is so that they can do whatever they want, whether that's, you know, to a job or, or money or clothes or a car, whatever they want to do, whatever they want to see that for, they've got to be doing that for themselves. So working with your young, with, with your, um, with, with, with your child on that uh, and making sure that, yeah, it's not just seen as a, well, what's in it for me? I'm not doing it if there's, if there isn't any reward for me. Um, but you might have to start there and, and then gradually, gradually move that forward. Yeah, I suppose some things we mentioned before, we touched on it, haven't we, that ultimately if the child is, carrying out some of these, these study techniques that we're mentioning and starting to see that they're actually developing knowledge, they're memorizing things, they're understanding it more. That in itself is a reward, isn't it? What what you're trying to get at here is uh, there's often a little bit at the start where, do you know what, we, we need to try and kind of get get things going at this point yeah, and get yeah. them on that sort of correct study habit so that it becomes a natural thing that they do. Yeah, you're right. And I think one of the, one of the, uh, the things that you mentioned there about seeing it, yeah, it, it, that, that, that's the key here. If you're just putting in hard work and you don't see the benefit or the or, or, or the kind of output, then it can become quite um, demotivating. Uh, you know, what's the point? I can't see the outcome. But if I pick up on a couple of things that we've we've talked about in previous episodes, we talked about two strategies: one called a brain dump mm. or blurting, and one called look, cover, right, check. 
there's a real physical, visible, how much have I learned? How much have I got? When you write down on the piece of paper what you can remember. And the more and more you do that, the more and more you're seeing that I, I'm filling the paper with lots and lots of things. Therefore, this is working. I am learning more. So the, 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 the visibility and, and, and the real physical nature of those strategies demonstrates how much you are learning. And if you follow one of the tips that we talked about at the end of both of those episodes, mm -hmm. in terms of keeping those bits of paper and, and filing them and then being able to see how much better you've done in two or three weeks' time, there you go. There's yeah. your progress. That's yeah. all the motivation you need. Yeah. What I have been doing has increased my knowledge because my paper is a, is, is a lot fuller with information than it was the first time I did it. So I know it's working, but I, as everyone, if, we, if, we, if we're putting time and hours in and it's not working or things aren't, or we don't perceive them to be having any benefit to us, that, that's when it becomes very difficult or, or it can do, isn't it? You know, that's when our motivation starts to drop. I love it. And one, one of the really nice things is um, I feel you've put me at ease in this in this episode. And I'll tell you why is because I have in a, as I've mentioned, a, a four and a three year old. One of the main ways that I parent is by motivating and rewards. So <laughs> I feel like I've, I've set a good standard there, a good foundation. Yeah. Uh, keep that going. Wean them off the rewards a little bit, perhaps at times. But but that is something that we've implemented, as, you know, as a, as a parenting cycle, isn't it? So what we're trying to say is that is good. That is okay. You, you absolutely can do that. And equally at the same time, it doesn't have to cost cost you £10 every time they do a 25-minute Pomodoro. 100%. And 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 if you think about the, the stages of parenting, and certainly our two stages, yep. where we're at, you've got four and a three-year-old, Old. Mm. I've got a 19 and a 15 year old. You're probably at the stage where reward charts are quite nice. They're quite motivating. I, mean, I remember creating what reward charts for my kids and, and creating them for their favorite kind of Disney characters at the time and stuff and sticking them on. And, and it really worked in stickers. Let me tell you, reward charts and stickers aren't, aren't, aren't as attractive at 18, 19 year, <laughs> in the year old. Oh, they don't work anymore. No, I'm sorry, uh, to, sorry to no. burst your bubble. But, it's, but the same principles are there. It's just that the physical act of the reward chat Absolutely. maybe doesn't need to be as kind of as, as obvious as that. But but taking them out for a coffee or taking them out for a drink or taking them out, you know, it's the same idea because they've worked up to that. They just haven't got the stickers on the laminated chart. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thanks, John. Thanks very much for um, for sharing your wisdom, imparting your knowledge on us all. As always, it's uh, it's an absolute pleasure, and, and you know, hopefully, it's it's helping everybody that's, that, that's kind of engaging with this in terms of helping you to help them through. We've got plenty more coming your way um, and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Thank you. <laughs>